Hi, my name is Bart Malio, and I'll be reading five of my poems for you for Poetry Vlog. The first is Lament. No New Orleans funeral dirges, no pall-bearing brass band melancholy. A single piano chord hangs in an upper room, a branch knocks the window, all the spiders spinning, a cough on the ground floor, and then the closing of doors. On being a bassist, alone at the space, all I hear is fluorescing 60-cycle hum. It's late, and even the true believers have packed it in. I'm crashed on white vinyl, my amp still buzzing, my bass pressing down on my chest. On a piano bench become coffee table, my metronome. I drink lukewarm water, a rest. Twenty years now, countless evenings wreathed in smoke, stolid in dark repose beside the drummer, my hands thrum the tune's pulse, push its blood, fill its lungs, dance, and exhale still césure. My great reward, to know so much of time, of the space inside movement, of subdivided breaths, bright exploded instants outside the compass of clocks and watches, to gaze upon the curve of sound from isolate distances out on the rim of the now. The Rain and John Cage. I am leery of approximations, my footnotes, my universal quantum theories. I hear rain and wind as spare percussion spattered against a white noise field panned left to right in the mix. But John Cage did not invent the rain. Backwards it have I, as if Cage wrote rain and God, hearing it at some ill-attended college modern music recital, cribbed it and snuck it on to the set list under a pseudonym de guerre. However, I do like this performance, now with the dopplering jet overhead, now with distinct pitches, rain on rain in a rain gutter, like Balinese metallophones. For Robert Creeley and Philip Lamantia. Through occultation we learn by eclipse. Lesser bodies interpose themselves between us and a source of light, often one too bright to be observed directly, we then augur via penumbra and aura, intuiting the thing by its inextinguishable traces. Insomniac, caffeine-addled, web-surfing, I learn belatedly of your deaths, wrapped in the blanket of spring's black chill. Three rooms away, my ticking clock continues. I reach first for love and then ecstasis, dressing, I find my green notebook and put up the water for green tea. I will wake you first with your poems and later with my own. For me, the paradox is incarnational. The presence of the obscure, the inexpressible, the transcendent in the revealed, the articulated, the words. Dreamwater. This is the last poem, and I wrote this after reading a quote in the New York Times. 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. This likely applies to half of the world population. At night, must my dream self drink great well-deep dippers, lest it crumble into fine vermilion powder and be borne aloft as eyes for the desert simoon. And how can I drink it when the glass keeps becoming a telescope and the liquid pooling into a cobalt and mercury moon?